Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Chronic Me podcast. I'm your host, Amy Esther, and today we are talking about how to make and keep routines when you live chronically ill. If you live chronically ill like me and are looking for more purpose, control, and joy in your life, then you are in the right place. This is a podcast that challenges your thinking around chronic illness so you can live the most amazing life despite extra challenges. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi, friend. Welcome back to the podcast. Today is all about habits, routines, creating the life you want to live, being more productive, doing more, creating all the habits that you need in your life. And first off, I highly recommend getting my productivity workbook. It will go into depth about getting more done with chronic illness to making and achieving your goals while living chronically ill. Whether it's that you just want to keep your house cleaner. Maybe it's you want to start a business. Maybe you want to be a better employee. Maybe you want to wake up earlier. Maybe you want to stick to your diets or your plans. This workbook is going to help you achieve whatever goal it is that you have. And you're going to be more productive by following all the steps in there. As much as I'd like to share all of it here in this podcast episode, it would take much too long. So I recommend getting the workbook. I will link it in the show notes or in the description on YouTube. And one of the big hard parts of all of productivity is keeping a routine and creating habits that will stick and doing the things you say you're going to do. I just think that is so difficult as a human and especially a human who lives chronically ill. How hard is it to keep up with your relationships? How hard is it to wake up earlier in the morning? How hard is it to get more work done? How hard is it to exercise every day? Keep an exercise routine. Keep a routine of making dinners every day. All of that. Whatever it is you're trying to do, we're going to talk about it today. So the first thing I want to do before we get into all the tips and advice and the things we're going to talk about, I want you to pick something. Think about one thing in your life that you want to work on. Maybe it is that you want to make dinners every night for your family. Maybe you want to get better at your money and you want to set a habit of checking on your budget every day or every week. Maybe it's that you want to get in the habit of doing yoga every night or another exercise routine. Maybe you want to wake up earlier. Whatever it is, pick something that you want to get into a better routine of, a habit you want to pick up on, and then think about that during this episode and take what we're learning today and use it for that habit. So the first thing I want to say about (laughs) creating routines when you live chronically ill is that it's hard for anybody This is just a normal human thing that's difficult to do. Now, I'm not saying it's not harder when you live chronically ill. I probably would argue that it is, and we'll talk about that. But when you are a human, creating a new habit is difficult. And how often have you tried and said, I'm going to just stick to this thing. I can do it. And you get motivated by something. You watch The Biggest Loser, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to go lose weight. Or you listen to this podcast that's so inspiring about how it's important to wake up early and you're like, I'm going to do it every day. And then you don't stick to it. Or you do it two times and it's over. Or you think, okay, my doctor says I have to exercise every day. I'm going to do it. I'm motivated. I'm pumped. And then you get ready to go exercise and you don't want to do it. And it's hard and it's difficult. And even for me, it's things that I think, okay, this is easy. I shouldn't complain about this. It's just one extra thing to do every day. And every time (laughs) my brain is like, yeah, we're so motivated. And then as soon as it comes to doing it, I'm not anymore. Or the first day I'm super motivated. The second day I'm a little bit motivated. And the third day I'm like, I'm out. I'm not doing this anymore. And the thing is that it's just a normal human thing. Like all of us do it, whether you're chronically ill or not. I think we all have experienced that where we want to stick to a plan and we don't. And there's a few reasons why we do that. Now, you may have heard that we're creatures of habit. And we are. We like to do the same thing every day. Our brains like that consistency. Once we get on something, we start doing something, we want to do it every day. And that may sound like, okay, well, if we're creatures of habit, we should be able to pick up a new habit and stick to it. But that's the problem, is we're creatures of habit, so we stick to our old habits, which is I watch TV instead of doing yoga, 
or I sleep in instead of waking up early. We're so used to our habits that creating a new one is difficult. I think another reason that it's really hard to pick up a new routine is because we often reward ourselves. We say, okay, I'm going to exercise every day this month, and then if I do that, I get $100 to go spend on whatever I want. And then we do that, and then we don't have that reward anymore, and we don't have a reason to stick to it. Or (laughs) we do it for maybe a little bit longer than normal because we want that reward, but then we decide maybe that reward's not even worth it. And I think rewarding ourselves actually isn't very helpful in keeping habits because we're only doing it for the reward. Like when I'm potty training my child, (laughs) I had people tell me, oh, just give them chocolate if they go on the potty. And I found that for both my kids, that didn't work. They didn't want to go on the potty for chocolate. They just needed to learn how to feel what it feels like when you need to go to the bathroom and then go to the bathroom before you wet your pants, right? Like they didn't actually need the chocolate. They didn't need a reward. They just needed to learn a new habit. And I think when we reward ourselves, sometimes it can be helpful. And I think in some situations, maybe that can help you. Maybe if you're watching The Biggest Loser and the reward is $500,000, like that might be worth it. But I think a lot of the times the reward doesn't get us in the habit of doing something. We're only doing it to try to chase some reward. We're not actually learning the skill of sticking to this new habit or this new routine. And then I think one more reason that we often as humans don't stick to a new habit is because we often go too big. We're like, I'm never eating sugar again, or I'm gonna go 30 days with no sugar when we're used to eating sugar for every meal. Or I'm gonna start exercising 30 minutes a day and right now we're not doing anything. Like it's too much. Our bodies and our brains are not ready for that. Now we know who are physically ill that jumping into something like 30 minutes a day exercise probably isn't good for our bodies. We need to work our way up to it. So we do have that benefit that we kind of naturally probably do things a little bit slower when we live chronically ill. But I think anybody just wants to jump in. Like we want to say, okay, I'm going to do this 30 minutes every day. I'm going to make a Pinterest worthy dinner every day. Because we get motivated by something, but then when it comes down to actually doing it, it's a lot harder to do. And we go deeper in the workbook about why that is. Why is that so difficult for our brains? Why do we get so excited and motivated? And then when it comes to actually doing it, we don't want to do it. We never want to do it. When I get excited about the podcast and like, oh, I'm going to do an episode every week, but then every time I go to sit down to do it, I never want to. But once I just get myself going and I start recording the podcast, I don't want to stop and I just get excited about it and I want to keep going. When I start doing yoga every night and I'm in the middle of my session, I'm like, why do I not do this every day? It feels amazing. And then the next day comes and I don't want to do it. So we do go deeper in the workbook about why that is and it will help you to understand what your brain is doing so that you can overcome that. Just know that that happens. (laughs) That's normal for us to be super motivated and excited about something until it comes down to actually doing it. And then it's really hard. But then we all live chronically ill. So we have extra challenge when it comes to keeping a routine. Because not only do we have to overcome the part of our brain that wants to go back to its old habits, that doesn't want to pick up something new, that is lazy, honestly. Our brains are lazy if you're anything like me. It's like, you know what's easier? Watching TV than getting up and going to bed at the time I said it would. You know what's easier? Sleeping in. You know what's easier than exercising? Not exercising. (laughs) Our brains just do that. But on top of that, we have the physical symptoms. So even if we can overcome that, Then we have this added thing of, but now I don't know how I'm going to feel. I might be able to get myself off the couch mentally, but physically have a great excuse all the time for why I shouldn't keep my habits, why I shouldn't start a new routine. Once I say I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m., then the next morning I'm like, yeah, I could, but I'm feeling extra sick and I live chronically ill and I need to take care of my body. So no, I'm not going to do that. And I have this I like to call it an extra excuse, but I also do think it is real. Like there are times where you're like, physically, I cannot get out of bed. It is better for my body to sleep in. However, there's a reason you made that goal in the first place. So first of all, I think we need to make our goals realistic. If you are chronically ill and you need extra sleep, maybe don't make a goal to wake up at 5 a.m. Maybe that's not the thing that is going to make you happier. Maybe choose something else. So yes, be realistic, but also know that your brain will use your illness as an excuse. 
and I do call it an excuse. I know some of you will be offended by that, <laughs> but it is a really good excuse and our brains like it because it's such a good excuse. In fact, I think I talked in one of my videos about how chronic illness can be fun because I always have a good excuse for when I don't wanna do something and it's true. But even if we're all in mentally, we still don't know how we're gonna feel. Because I can be as motivated as I want to every Monday record a podcast episode and then when it comes to Monday, I might feel awful. And so how do we get through that? Now, I have a very simple answer for you today. And again, I know I said this before, not just trying to sell you something, but I'm telling you it will change your life. The productivity workbook goes in depth so that not only this concept, but even more about productivity. And I have a simple answer for you. It's super easy. It works like a charm and it's called the five minute rule. The five minute rule is a rule that I want to say I created, but I'm sure someone has done it before. <laughs> I don't think I'm the first one to have thought of this, but I just, that's just what I named it, the five minute rule. So what I do is I tell myself, I just have to do it for five minutes. So if I have a goal to do yoga every night, then I say, I just have to do it for five minutes. And the reason that I choose five minutes is because five minutes is long enough that it kind of gets me going, but it's not long enough that my brain has an excuse for it, even if I'm feeling really sick. There are very rare cases where five minutes of yoga isn't a possibility with my physical state. Like, yes, there could be a time where it's not worth it to do five minutes of yoga. Most of the time, five minutes, like I can do that. So you can do any amount you want, but five minutes to me is so easy that I can't talk myself out of it. I say, I need to work on the podcast for five minutes. I need to just set up my equipment. Even if I set it up and then I have to take it back down, that's okay. My goal is to work on my podcast for five minutes. My goal is to write notes for a YouTube video for five minutes. My goal is to do yoga for five minutes. Now, I do have to get my yoga mat out. I have to get my podcast mic out and my camera and my light. And I have to get a few things out. And that might seem hard to my brain, but I just remind myself I only have to do it for five minutes. I set a timer for five minutes. And these are the days I don't want to do it. Some days I don't need this. I can just kind of get myself to do it. Many days I just have to set the five minute timer. And then also remember that you will forget at first. You will forget that you said every night you were gonna do yoga before bed. So you set a timer. Okay, I normally go to bed at 10. I'm gonna set a timer for 9.45 that I start yoga or 9.30. I set a timer for 9.30 and for five minutes from 9.30 to 9.35, I do yoga. And you have to remind yourself at first because I promise you will forget because we are creatures of habit and we go back to what we're used to. So set yourself a reminder and then set a timer for five minutes to do the thing you said you're gonna do. And the reason I make it so short is because my goal is not to become super fit with yoga. My goal is not to film five podcast episodes in one sitting. My goal is to do what I said I was gonna do. And when I learn to do that, it's a lot easier to keep going. Now, the reason I like the five minute rule, not only does it teach me to just do what I say I'm gonna do, because that's a skill we need to learn, but it also gets me going. It gets the momentum going. And I would honestly say nine times out of 10, I do more than five minutes because then I just got up and I'm going and I'm like, wait a second, this does feel really good to do yoga. This does feel really good to record the podcast. I am actually excited about this episode but getting going is very, very difficult. And I tell myself going into it, you do not have to do more than five minutes. I don't go into it thinking, okay, now I need to do five minutes so I get the momentum to do more. No, no, no. I tell myself, Amy, you are going to walk into that gym. You are going to work on the treadmill for five minutes, and then you're going to leave the gym. And if you want to stay longer once you're there, that is totally fine, but I am not holding you to anything more. You just need to go for five minutes. And when I used to go to the gym, I genuinely went for five minutes sometimes. I walked into the gym, I lifted weights for five minutes, and I left. And that was me doing what I said I was going to do. And it's me saying no matter what I feel like, emotionally 
or physically, I am going to do this thing. And now I do it with yoga, which is a little bit easier because it's at home. (laughs) It is harder to get yourself somewhere, but when I tell myself I only have to go for five minutes, still a lot easier than saying, okay, you have to go to the gym for 30 minutes every day. Because guess what? Even though five minutes a day seems like nothing, like Amy, that's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna help me get better at yoga. I'm not gonna be able to write my whole book if I only write five minutes a day. Well, guess what? If you wanna write a book and you work on it for two hours, three days in a row, and then you quit and you don't work on it for a year, that is going to be a whole lot less than if you do it five minutes a day, every single day, no matter what. The little things add up so much more than we think they do. And like I said, we often just get the momentum and we keep going. But even if we don't, even if I only do yoga for five minutes every day, I will benefit so much more than if I do it 30 minutes for a week and then never do it again. We have to stay consistent. We have to teach ourselves to do what we say we are going to do. If a timed thing isn't working for your goal. So for example, let's say that you want to make dinner every night and you're sick of going out to eat. You're trying to save money on going out to eat. What you want to do instead of saying, you know, I cooked dinner for five minutes, you could do that if you want to. Um, But another way to do it if the minutes aren't really working for your goal is you could just set a task and say, okay, normally we go out to eat three days a week. Three out of our seven days a week, we're going out to eat and we want it to be zero eventually. But instead of just saying we're never going out to eat again, and doing that for a week and then giving up and going out to eat five times in a week, right? Instead, you're gonna say, normally we go out three days a week. This week, we're gonna go out twice a week. And then our third time, we're gonna do a freezer meal. So it is a step forward. It's a step closer to what your ideal is for your life, but it's not so overwhelming and hard that you're gonna give up, right? Because if you are used to going out to eat three times a week and you switch it to two, And one of those days that you normally go out to eat, you just make a freezer meal. You don't even have to do any prep work. You just throw it in the oven. Then it's not that much harder. Again, we want it to be so easy. We can't talk ourselves out of it because we will talk ourselves out of it, especially if we live chronically ill. Because like I said, we have a really good excuse for talking ourselves out of doing yoga every night, of making dinner every night, of going to the gym, of working on your business, of writing your book or whatever it is you want to do. It's so easy to talk yourself out of. You need to make yourself a goal that's easy enough. You can't talk yourself out of it. There's no good reason for you to not do it. I want to wake up earlier. I'm going to wake up five minutes earlier than I normally do. It sounds insignificant, but if you can do that, then after you get used to it, you can do 10 minutes. And after you get used to that, you can do 30 minutes. And you might start to notice that it feels better than you think it will, that you enjoy it more than you think you will. You might find that you love doing yoga. You start with five minutes a day and you just start going and then you end up doing it for 30 minutes. And other nights, you just stick with your five minutes and you're done. If five minutes is too much for you, start with two. Start with one. Start with something that you can't talk yourself out of because the goal is to teach yourself to do what you say you're going to do and let that add up. The small little things add up to huge things. I promise you, you will get so much farther in life by doing little bits than by doing huge, big things. All right, my friend, I hope this was helpful for you. If you want more on how to be productive, don't forget to grab the workbook and I will see you on the next episode. Hey friend, do you find value in this podcast but want to take it to the next level? Work with me one-on-one or check out Chronically Me, the course and workbook. This course takes the things you are learning on the podcast and helps you apply them directly to your life. This course dives deeper into changing your thinking, teaching you how the brain works and how to maximize your life with chronic illness. I designed this course as a companion to the podcast. The podcast gives specific real world examples and the course helps you put them into action. If you want personalized one-on-one help from me, I got you. I also offer individual coaching programs where we can talk about the problems you are facing. 
I'll help you manage your brain and find solutions to nearly every problem that you have. We will walk hand in hand on this journey together. Check the show notes or the video description on YouTube for more information on getting extra help from me. Talk to you soon. Thank you.